in this second and final video for projectile motion, we are going to drill down into the kinematics equation, your Stuva equations, and use calculation to actually calculate how far the basketball will travel. As you can, if you remember this scene from the previous video, how far the ball will travel, what's the maximum height, and how long will it take to hit the ground. Now, before we move on to the subsequent part, uh, I also included some proving questions. These questions are normally asked in objective. They are not very common in structure, but it's a useful way to help us visualize and understand how to use kinematics equation. And to be honest, at this level, you should be quite comfortable with equations. All right. So without further ado, let's go. All right. So what you see here is a vector drawing of an object in projectile motion. We're about to launch the projectile at an angle theta. All right, so we're going to graph out all the vector components, okay? And uh, as usual, since um, this one, the only way to solve this question, look, u is a vector. Whenever there's a vector, right, the direction matters. So we're all, we're all going to put x component one side and y component the other side. Remember in the video just now mentioned by Miss Ellie? We're going to split the vector components so that you have ux and uy. Okay, and we are going to assign them. By the way, this diagram is this diagram. It's the same diagram, okay? vector diagrams. Huh? So um, when resolved, the horizontal component will be u cos theta and the vertical component will be u sine theta. Remember, because cos theta is side over hypotenuse. All right, so the trajectory will approximate a parabola. Since it's going to approximate a parabola, um, here is where the trajectory is. It will look like a parabola. And what I'm drawing is the ball at equal time intervals. Okay, so you can see initially the ball would travel a larger height, vertical height, because the ball was faster. Okay, so this motion of the ball will be governed by a few rules. Okay, and uh, since this is kinematics, right, we're going to need to stuva. So I'm just going to build a table here so that we can STUVA la, for kinematics. All right, so um, there's x component, there's y component. We deal with them separately. When substituting an equation, we will also deal with them separately. You cannot take something from the x component and substitute into an equation that is meant for the y component. All right, divide and conquer. Ah. All right, so a few important points or ideas regarding projectiles. Number one, um, if there is no air resistance, the only force or there is no horizontal force. Lah, because what else is going to push and pull the ball in a horizontal way? If you look at the basketball just now, it will still travel in a horizontal manner, but there is no force continuing it continuing its motion or changing its motion. Hence, there is no horizontal acceleration. Ax is zero. That's why the ball will keep moving at a constant speed in the horizontal direction. And if there's no air resistance, the vertical force is only mg or the weight. Hence, the vertical acceleration, Ay, is negative g. So for all projectile, this uh, line for acceleration is fixed, lah, is constant. And we're just going to take the traditional up is positive, down is negative, right is positive, left is negative law. And the third important point is because there's only one trajectory or one ball. So both X and Y component will have the same timing because time is a scalar. La, okay. So there's no sense in resolving the time. One more thing that you can fill in is UX is U cos theta and UY is U sine theta. So the rest of the component regarding what to put in depends on what you're looking for. So let's say you release the projectile at t equal to zero and it hits the ground at t is equal to t. The horizontal distance traveled, normally they will call this range, the projectile range. So let's say r. And the y component for the displacement will be zero because the ball returns to the same height again. This is just in case you want to calculate some stuff. If let's say you want to find the maximum height, you will put h max on top here. Okay. And the range will be r over 2, and the time would be t over 2, because this is a symmetrical movement, provided the launching ground and the plates where the ball drop is the same height. So because of this, uh, you can put v is equal to 0, because this is a vertical component. Okay, At the maximum height, v will be 0. Alright, so let's think about how do we graph this idea. Okay, so to recap, and also to fill in your notes so that you have something to study. Okay, uh, I'm going to very quickly label out all the uh, ux and uis, or the horizontal component of the velocities along the trajectory. And as you can see, they're all the same. It'll be u cos theta, u cos theta, u cos theta, 
u cos theta. Hopefully you get the idea, horizontal component velocity will always be the same. So this axis is slightly different than the one uh, in Miss Ellie's video. I have uh, stuck, stuck to the traditional S, V, A. Okay, so um, for V, the velocity is constant u cos theta. Since there's no horizontal force, there's no horizontal acceleration, so horizontal acceleration is zero. And for the S graph, you will get this straight graph. So this one is without rebound, okay? If you want to draw the rebound, you draw smaller. Lah. All right. So this one without rebound, let's say this is the total time of flight, capital T. All right, the total time of flight T. Uh, and you will know that this is your range R, which is also the same as the area under this graph R. Okay, so you should be clear with the relationship across the graph by now. Okay, so this is the horizontal component. It's the easiest one to draw. We're going to now move on to draw the vertical one. Again, if you already understood, you can skip this part. It's just to recap and for you to fill in your notes. You can draw the one with the rebound as well. Just draw this one smaller. Lah. Okay, so let's say the time of flight is t. I'm going to label out the time t. Okay, and I'm just going to say that the acceleration is negative g. Lor. This one not a problem. But what about the velocity? How are uh, the velocity? So as we know, this is free fall. So you can see the velocity here is slowing down. The arrow is getting smaller and smaller because the vector velocity is pointing up, but the acceleration vector is pointing down. So you expect it to slow down. And then eventually at this position here, your velocity is zero. And then it will speed up. So all this arrow will be longer and longer in the opposite direction. As seen inside the GIF, la, the GIF, the FAT, the simulation okay so here t is equal to t and if we recombine the horizontal and vertical component you will get a vector u this vector will be the same as this one okay and all this vector right the resultant is tangential to the path la. so anyway we can now split it into half because this is maximum height and we know at maximum height the vertical speed is zero so we're gonna Take label t and t over 2, that is where it reaches the maximum height. And uh, you can see from the graph, uh, at graph, constant gradient of vt is negative g. So from here, because at is constant, so v vt will have a constant gradient. So this is not new, this graph. So u sine theta initial and negative u sine theta final. It should be the same. Okay, And for this, uh, you can see now, now I'm a bit OCD. I want the parabola to be perfect. So I speed up eight times already. I I draw many times so that my graph is a nice parabola. On paper, I can draw very nice because I can rotate the paper. I just cannot rotate the computer. All right. So from here, uh, as you can see, after many, many attempts, it's like trying to draw eyebrows, you know. One eyebrow will look nicer than the other eyebrow. Okay. So after many, many attempts, and I left it all here. Though. Okay. Just to tell you that when it comes to graphing, um, if you want to draw smaller to re represent the rebound, that's okay. Ah, this is perf almost perfect. Lah. Okay. If you don't want to, you can just draw the one without the rebound. Up to you. As long as you know how to interpret the graph. Do not memorize. Ah. So once again, the area under this graph will be your hmax. And this area will be your opposite. Because this one is travel upward, this area is travel downwards. Okay. So don't memorize the graph. Learn to interpret them. Equations. But before we go there, this is the bonus one where Miss Ellie talk about energy. So I just include it here for you. Lah. So this is energy against time. We know that we are going to draw KE and GPE. GPE is the most straightforward law. At the T equal to 2 is at the highest point. That is where your GPE is the highest. Lah. Okay, so later you can see uh, there will be some form of calculation needed in some of your structural questions. We are going to assume that you know how to use the basic equations like MGH lah, because GPE is MGH. Lah. Okay. So this is the maximum height. And at the same time, if you want to think about kinetic energy, the kinetic energy will be maximum when you launch the ball and the ball will slow down and stop. It doesn't stop. Uh. Vertical stop, but there's still horizontal component. So here, here can never be zero. Okay, You will decrease, but your EK is never zero because at maximum height, there is still ux, and ux will be part of your kinetic energy. All right, so here is where I like to casually mention about conservation of energy. Uh, conservation of energy here means that uh, the drop in Ke will be equal to the rise in GPE. Logic, ma, you cannot create or destroy energy. 
So if your Ke decreased by 100 Joule, then your GP should increase by 100 Joule. Conservation of energy. So learn to interpret these graphs. And in the next part, we will talk about deriving some important proofs. Okay, so I'll see you there. So here we are going to talk about a few important proofs, but don't memorize though, learn the technique. Okay, so I'll walk you through. We're going to use the kinematics equation and apply the Stuva list that we have done earlier in this video. Right, so here, um, let's say you want to find the time of flight, T, which is the time taken for the ball to go up and come down. So I'm going to use S is UT plus half AT squared for the Y component. And in this case, your S is zero because it returns back to ground. U is U sine theta and T is the time that I'm looking for. So I think I spot a quadratic equation. So what I'll do is I'll factorize. And after factorizing out, I'll get T is equal to zero. This is the initial position where S is zero. And U sine theta minus G over 2T is zero. So by rearranging, I'll get T is equal to 2U sine theta over G. This is the time of flight. Memorize, uh, please don't. Learn to derive. I don't think this derivation will take you long. Uh. Took me all of one minute. Okay, so all this important proof we will find in terms of u, theta, and g, la, the initial thing, initial values. It's a little bit like, you know, when the, in the video, in the intro video you saw in Law of the Rings, when the rock is coming, maybe the, the troll was just standing there like counting in his head or doing this calculation of how long will it take for the ball to whack me in the face and exactly at that split second I step aside so I can spit at the rock. You could get the point, okay? Or maybe he has intuition, who knows? When you catch a ball, when you play basketball, do you calculate the time of your friend throwing the ball at you or you instinctively catch it, okay? So actually uh, there's a lot of instinct in our heads, it's just that we are trying to also come up with a value or a method to this. Alright, so we're going to continue now to find the range, i.e. how far the trajectory or the ball will travel or the rock will travel or the projectile will travel. So I'm going to use S is UT plus half AT square all over again, but this is for the X component. Note that whatever I put here, right, is all values from the X component, sorry, from the Y component. For the time of flight, everything is from the Y component. For the range, everything is from the X component because R is for the X component. Ma. Please, how do I know whether I should use X or Y? Take your time, oh, develop your skills, oh. okay? So from here, I'm going to put u cos theta times t. I already know t, which is 2u sine theta over g. Just like all this proof, it takes a while for you to develop a sense of what you should do. Okay, so you will get r is u square. Um, this is cos 2 theta, by the way, divided by g. Alright, so... Later in the in-class activity, if we have time, I will come up, I will explain a bit why these are all quite useful uh, ways to write your range. But at the same time, it's not needed. Please don't memorize. Okay, finally, we're going to try to find maximum height. So I'm going to use this multi-purpose equation again, S is UT plus half AT squared, because we don't know the speed now when it's hitting down. It's not our concern. Our concern is just, I want to run away from this boulder, or I don't want the boulder to hit me. So I need to find the maximum height. So I'm going to substitute into the y component. Okay, let's stop here and pause and check a bit. U is u sine theta. This time is u, u sine theta over g, divided by 2. That's why the 2 disappears. Why is it divided by 2? Because at maximum height, t is t over 2. That's why we divide by 2. So instead of 2 u sine theta over g, I will put u sine theta over g. Take some time to go through the proof, okay? And uh, this will be half negative g u sine theta over g. So I'm substituting this list inside here. Learn to make the list. All right, so I'm going to uh, simplify this. I'm doing this a bit step by step last so people are not lost. So I'm just going to open the bracket. I get u square sine square theta over g and negative g over 2 u square sine square theta over g square. Simplifying the second term. I'll get u square over g sine square theta minus can cancel off the g u square sine square theta over 2g. So I get this thing where it's like 1 minus half, right? You can see u square sine square theta over g. These two are the common terms. Huh? So what I have left is u square sine square theta over 2g. Now you know why you don't memorize. Don't you think that all of these three equations look a bit the same? Let me pause first. 
this one got no square got two on top this one got square but the two is inside the angle and it's cos this one everything is squared and then got a two bottom you will mess things up one unless you're very good at memorizing la. so no no never memorize ah, okay because uh, if you memorize ah, then you confusion okay so learn learn to use your stuva all right so that's it for this part i'm now going to move on to talk about some examples here we're going to talk about examples regarding projectile motions i've chosen two and uh you should try more questions after you watch this video. All right, so let's go. Okay, so here you can see, this is from page five in your notes, by the way, there are, there's a stone uh, thrown horizontally. So this horizontally uh, is an important point, okay? Because if it's horizontally, means there's no vertical velocity component, okay? So if you look at this one, uh, the 20 meter per second will be your UX and uh, as usual I would highly recommend you list down your stuva la, because you know it helps you organize and know how to use the equation all right so anyway after that rambling you will find that um, your x component you only know that your acceleration is zero and you will maintain the same horizontal speed of 20 meter per second as mentioned in the theory video just now but the vertical component you are accelerating downwards with acceleration of negative g, okay? Um, the vertical component of initial velocity is zero because it is moving horizontally and it will fall through a height of 15 meter downwards. That's why there's a negative here, all right? So based on this, uh, calculate the time to fall 15 meter. We can use s is ut plus half at squared because we don't have v and we will use this for y component. Notice that I only put values pertaining y component there's no x component okay and then i solve it i get 1.75 second so there's a question of how many sf to put if the question gives you 2 to 3 sf you see all this number 20 15 all this is 2 to 3 sf so your answer should also be 2 to 3 sf long. or if you don't want to think so much generally 2 to 3 sf is correct okay either one is fine so yeah remember to put the correct uh, components into the equation. Don't take 20 and put inside here. What I normally see a uh, common mistake is that the students will use 20 in the y component or use g in the x component. They have to be separated. The only interlink is time. All right, so let us continue. Next part, you are asked to calculate the uh, speed where it hits the ground after falling 15 meter. So we're going to find this v, okay? And to find this, I'll use u equal v is u plus at for the y component. And I'll substitute because it has fallen off with a total time of 1.75 seconds. So I'll get the downward velocity as negative 17.2 or 17.2 downwards. Because this is 3 marks, it should tell you that this is not your final answer. 7.2 is the vertical component. But don't forget, you also have a horizontal component. Your 20 meter per second is still 20 meter per second. Because it's not going to change, ma. there's no horizontal forces. So because of this, when I put it together, so I'm just going to try to move it over and after that I give up. Okay, I'm trying to draw the vector diagram for you. So here your resultant velocity would be the resultant between these two. Lah, which if you did your chapter 1 work, if your Kung Fu for vectors is okay, you would immediately notice that this one, you can use the Pythagorean theorem. Which is why we resolve into x component and y component in the first place. Because when we want to combine them again, it's actually quite straightforward. Alright, so this is me just reminding you that this is the constant x component. So from here, you can get your resultant speed as 20 square plus 17.2 square, and then you total your calculator. And then you will get around 26 meter per second. Alright, next part, describe the difference between the displacement and distance of the stone. But before that, I'm going to draw the vector diagram for this lab. So you can see the 20 meter per second is maintained. So at this point, it's still 20 meter per second. Whereas your vertical velocity has increased from zero on top of the cliff to negative 17.2 when it hits the ground 15 meters below the starting point. Okay, so this is what I meant. Lah. So all this uh, speed, right, vectorly, vectorially, when you draw the vector, it's tangential to the part. Okay, next part, distinguish between or describe the difference between displacement and distance traveled by the rock. 
So the red arrow is the displacement law, and then the black arrow is the distance traveled law. So how do you describe that? Well, distance is the total part length of the ball. And displacement would be, you can use the term closest distance, or you can say the straight line distance, uh, or minimum distance, connecting the initial and final position of the ball. Okay, the start and finish point. And if you want to be extra safe, you can say in that direction to indicate that displacement is a vector. Next, as FM16, paper 2.2, you can find this in page 40. You can pause the video now and find it. Okay, so define acceleration. This is rate of change of velocity. I don't accept any other definition. Okay, so here you have a ball kick from a horizontal ground towards the top of a vertical wall, and we are kicking it at 28 degrees and the wall is 24 meters away, it will hit the top of the wall after 1.5 seconds. Calculate the initial horizontal component Vx of the ball. So I'm going to resolve this one. Horizontal will be V cos 28, vertical will be V sine 28. As previously mentioned many, many times, list down your stuva because that will help you organize all these numbers. So you have X component and Y component. And 24 will be the range X. And uh, you can see that if you want to find where the ball is, this is SY, in case you need to find the height of the wall. Time is 1.5 seconds where it hits the wall. Vx is equal to Ux, which is equal to V cos 28 because the horizontal acceleration is zero. Vertical is straightforward, negative G and V sine 28. So to find Vx, I can use S is ut plus half at square, specifically for the x component. For here, right, your S is 24. You're looking for Vx and your time is 1.5 second. Since your acceleration is zero, uh, we, the last term will cancel out. Law. So you will get, in the end, Vx is 16 meter per second. Okay? Show that the initial vertical component Vy is 8.5. So I can draw a vector diagram. Uh. You have Vx, which is 16, and then you have Vy, which is tangent 28. Uh. Sorry, Vy, which is uh, the vertical component. So in this case, you can use tangent uh, based on this vector diagram. So learn to use the vector diagram because that will make your working a little bit more easier. So after you complete the vector diagram from top to tail, you will notice that I can use tangent. Uh. Tangent 28 here will be Vy over Vx. And I know Vx, ma, Vx is 16. So because of this, uh, I can find Vy. This is actually a more accurate answer. All right. Uh, compared to another alternative method that I will show you, you could say, Miss, can I not like find V? I know v x is v cos 28 uh, so i can find v lo. so i press my calculator and i get v as 18.1 this is the combination of horizontal and vertical and then i find v y which is v sine 28 which is 18.1 sine 28 and that would give me around 8.49 uh this is slightly less accurate but it's still 8.5 so don't worry about it as long as you when you round to 2sf you get the same answer all right, next, calculate the time taken for the ball to reach the maximum height, not the wall, uh, the maximum height. So it's too far, you know, because you know at maximum height, Vy is zero. Ma. So you don't have the maximum height. We're going to use V is U plus AT because this equation has no S. And finally, we substitute inside. U is 8.5. Even if you can't prove 8.5, you can use the answer in front. Uh, and then you get 0 0.87 seconds. And the reason why they ask you to find all these numbers like, is ta, you're going to have to plot a graph. Right? So this is a graph of Vy until it hits the wall. It hits the wall at 1.5 second. Your graph has to stop at 1.5 second. And then after that, you need to use the graph to find the maximum height. So uh, I know the initial speed is 8.5. They say one ma. And then it will reach maximum height or zero velocity at 0 0.87. So I'm going to plot out these two points and connect the dots. Because I know this is gravitational acceleration and I understand the graph, so I expect a straight line. So I will confidently join these two points with a straight line and extend that straight line all the way to 1.5 second. Do not exceed 1.5 second. Okay? So this one gonna do ding 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 ding. Of course, yours will be more accurate uh, because this is not a ruler, okay. Anyway, um this is what I did. So you must stop at 1.5. Two marks would be your graph starting and stopping at the correct point and also passing through this coordinate. Lah. 
Okay, next you want to find the maximum height, which is the area of this yellow triangle because this is on the way up. So what you can do you is you can use half 8.5 times 0 0.85. Oh. All right, and this will be the maximum height. Of course, you can also use kinematics equations, lah, but then why? You can just find the triangle. It's great. It's wonderful. We move on. Okay, if you want to use kinematics, like your stuva can on your own time. Lah. All right, next part three. The maximum GPE of the ball above the ground is 22 joule. Calculate the mass of the ball. All right, so we'll just plug the number in and then you will see that GPE is mgh. So you just put the numbers in. That's all. It's a numbers game. Okay, G is 9.81. It will travel 3.7 meters upwards. So next, a ball of greater mass. So now we replace the ball with a heavier ball, but we are kicking it at the same velocity. So if it's the same velocity, uh, means it will have the same trajectory. Uh, really? Uh. So if, is there any effect on the maximum height? Now if you look at this one, uh, is there any term in M? No, right? So mass will actually not affect your acceleration. So you can see that your acceleration of the ball is independent of mass. Of the mass. Hence, there is no change in maximum height. But then you could be thinking, wait a wait a miss. I remember this equation F equal ma. Leh. So huh? how can you say that acceleration is not affected by mass? Well, I'm just going to consider F equal ma for x and y component. If you look at the x component, right? Your AX is always zero. Uh. What is zero is always zero. No need to say already. Lah. And then for your AY, right, you can see from this uh, diagram or this video that your F is mg, but your acceleration is equal to g because the M and M can cancel out. In other words, right, if you have larger mass, okay, let me, if you have larger mass, nah, if you have larger mass here, it means that you have more weight. So it cancels out. So the acceleration is essentially constant. And because the acceleration is constant, you will have the same maximum height. If you want a larger maximum height, you need to change the 9.81. Okay, you either change how high you kick the ball or you change the 9.81. In fact, your acceleration is always constant for free fall and projectile. Okay, doesn't matter uh, what context it is, as long as there's no air resistance, okay, your acceleration is constant for free fall and projectile. Okay, so it's kind of like something that is a bit tricky. They purposely ask you to find GPE here just to mess with you. They'll be thinking like, hey, you look at this person, maybe the person will be influenced and think that, oh, if M change, then H will change. Please double check the concept. This is how CIE tests whether you really understand or you can just do calculation. You know, understand. All right. The second thing I want to talk about, okay, now I'm recording live already, is these equations. So if you remember the derivation for this one, this uh, derivation for Hmax, there's no M here. In fact, the entire consideration of Stuva, right, has no term in mass because the only acceleration that we have right now is due to gravity, and gravity is constant. Gravity that's acting on you, if let's say you are 40 kg because you are a tiny Asian person, versus gravity acting on me because I'm not a tiny Asian person, it's the same, it's 9.81. If we fall out a window, you and I will have the same acceleration, 9.81, okay? Right, so, so this is what I mean by this equation can be useful, especially if let's say you were to answer the question of like, how do I increase the time of flight? Uh, how do I increase the range? Do I change my theta? Do I change my u? So you can consider these equations, uh, which uh, if we have time, I will include this in class exercise. Lah. Okay, so, uh, so yeah, that's it for projectile. The main idea here is you should know how to anticipate the movement and perform the analysis. And the important points would be, if there's no air resistance, there's no horizontal force, so there's no horizontal acceleration. In fact, the important one is this line. Uh, okay, you can find these notes in your one note. Nah. Okay, so you should be able to explain why this why ax is zero, why ay is negative g, and also at the same time you should be able to. Uh, deduce certain components of this motion, uh, whether it's the uh, maximum height or the range, etc, etc. So this projectile is really cool. Imagine if you're standing here and then the ball is coming towards you. So you should know how to calculate the ball. Uh, Alright? Calculate the ball. Calculate different things. 
regarding to the ball. For example, if I modify this wall question, right? Uh, ha, 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 ha. I modify. Uh. So this is how I'll modify. Number one, I will ask you to find the height of the wall. Don't you want to know the height of the wall? I want to know the height of the wall. So I'll identify the height of the wall. Uh. And then I will ask another question. Where should I put another wall such that the ball will hit it at the same height? I'll ask these kind of questions. Uh. Just just to see whether students understand or not, okay? So, um, yeah, think about it. How do you find the height of the wall? And then the second thing I want to talk to you about, besides this, is that when it comes to graphing, right, the values are important. Uh. If they say until it hits the wall, then you need to stop at where it hits the wall, which is 1.5, all right? And finally, if you think about this, um, this entire situation, right, is just free fall, adding a horizontal component okay so this question definitely will come out in your as it's just that you don't know whether it'll be an objective whether it's in structure whether they will combine it with other topics all right so have fun trying out past your questions and i will see you in the next chapter where we'll talk about forces finally see you then